Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. How you doing? Welcome to the show. We're gonna hit you up with some Homestead Act, 1862, baby. How's that? Check it out. Whether you're a high school student, whether you're a lifelong learner, cray cray on the internet, we got a little bit of the teaching if you're ready to do a little bit of the learning. So giddy up. So here we go. Um, the Homestead Act is a really great example of, get this vocab word, economic nationalism. When the federal government takes certain actions through legislation, or sometimes executive action, in order to sweeten the pot in terms of the economy, in order to kind of expand it using the um, hand of the government. Um, the Homestead Act was originally developed as a free soil idea. The Free Soil Party predates the Republican Party. And really, this is a bunch of Northerners who are trying to find a way to make sure that as we move westward, that we have uh, free land rather than slave land because it's good for the economy, it's good for immigration, it's good for jobs. So Abraham Lincoln was a member of the Free Soil Party, but they couldn't get any of their ideas through. You want to know why? Who do you think don't like immigrants and people moving out of the South? Yeah, it would be the Southerner. So um, with a split Congress, a Southern-Northern legislature, you can't do that. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Until the Civil War. So the Homestead Act is signed by Abraham Lincoln, and it's passed by a Northern Republican Congress because there ain't no Southerners in there during the Civil War. Um, and uh, it goes into actions. Here, here's what it does. Um, number one, 160 acres of kind of federal unappropriated land was up for um, basically a giveaway. So there's a couple of rules we'll go over, but that's a lot of land. We want to, in a sense, kind of advocate. It's called, you ready for a really cool vocab word? Are you ready? The Yemon Farmer. <laughs> kind of this like, it's really like a medieval idea that... Um, People should be able to be kind of like the king of their own castle, to cultivate their own land, to have that type of ownership um, which gives rise to um, a good economy and uh, opportunity over the long run. Um, but here are the rules, all right? You only got three rules. Number one, you can't be at war against the United States of America. It's probably a pretty good idea. So if you're a southern rebel, you can't get the free land because, you know, you're kind of shooting at Union soldiers. Number two, you had to be 21. Um, and this included anybody who was free. So um, women, they were uh, able to get the land. Um, f uh, freed blacks, freed slaves, they were able to get the land. And of course, immigrants, uh, white men, they're able to get the land too. As long as you were the head of the household, you were 21, and you were willing to go work the land. All right? This isn't like, like you know, some kind of landlord scheme where you could get the free land and then you know, lease it out. You have to actually go live there, and you have to uh, upkeep it, and you have to farm. Um, after five years, the land is yours. So those are the rules. 21, had a household, 160 acres, farm the land, baby. And then after five years, uh, cha-ching, you got a home. I'm always thinking a little house on the prairie. Yeah, shout out to Michael Landon. So there you go, Abraham Lincoln. It really shows the roots of the Republican Party. It's really a party of economics and individual ownership at the end of the day. So there you go. Why don't you chew on that fat for a little bit? And if you need a little bit more of the learning, then you can come to my page, Hip Use History, and we have uh, 300 or so videos that'll grow your brain like a freaking Chia Pet. How do you like that? Where attention goes, guys, energy flows. Um, best wishes.